Hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is Masters of the Universe. Now, uh, I recently finished up a series of G.I. Joe video reviews, where I was reviewing the G.I. Joe figure subscription services, of which there were eight of them. So I posted eight videos reviewing all of those. But in the middle of that, I posted a review of some Masters of the Universe figures, which was the latest series to ship out from Super 7. And uh, I got a ton of uh, views and a lot of comments uh, on that particular video. So I thought I would maybe revisit Masters of the Universe again, since that seems to be uh, what people like to watch. And uh, if you've watched all my videos, I always sit here and you know I'm a Masters of the Universe fan. So um, I considered maybe I would just go back and review the previous wave of Masters of the Universe figures. But uh, then I thought, well, it might be fun to do uh, like a top 10 list. Everybody likes top 10 lists, best of lists. So I started compiling a list of what I considered the, uh, the 10 best modern Masters of the Universe figures. Although that was really, really hard to do. There's so many great figures and I kept finding myself putting things on and putting things off. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll split this up into two lists and I'll do a list of the top 10 figures uh, that are redos of vintage toys. And then because the current line is expanded so far beyond the vintage line, they have so many new toys of characters that weren't featured in the old toy line. I figured I would feature them on a separate list. So the top 10 figures never previously produced. And even that was still, that was too tough to do. So I went with 15 and 15. So on this video, I'm going to do what I consider the top 15 Masters of the Universe Classics figures of figures that we had in the vintage line. Um, and my definition of Masters of the Universe Classics is really essentially any of the modern Masters of the Universe figures that we've gotten from 2008 onwards. I know some of the figures have been considered to be in subsets like Club Skull and whatnot, but I'm just looking at them across the board. So any modern Masters of the Universe figures uh, of the last uh, 10 or 11 years. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll jump into that and yeah, I hope you enjoy. So in the number 15 spot, I have Buzz Off. Now Buzz Off was my favorite of the hero characters when I was a kid. I liked him more than He-Man and uh, Man-at-Arms and some of the maybe more popular guys. Um, cause I always loved creatures and monsters and Buzz Off, you know, he looks like he could very easily be a villain because he's kind of monstrous in appearance, but, uh, yeah, he was a hero and he was great. So this figure here came out in 2010. So pretty early on in the line, which makes sense because I would consider Buzz Off kind of one of the main Masters of the Universe characters. So you'll see here his main feature is these translucent wings. He's also got some little extra legs hiding back there too, which are articulated. But the wings have ball joints on there. They can go in lots of poses. And yeah, they work really well and they look pretty cool. It's got that kind of like a biomechanical look to them. And... I can't even remember what he all came with for weapons. Um, some of these figures I've had on display out here for so many years and their weapons have all been tucked away. And so uh, I think he might've come with an ax, um, like a smaller little handheld ax along with this spear of his. And I believe he also came with his removable helmet, which I never really understood the helmet. It's just a big yellow helmet with kind of bigger green eyes on it. Um, but it's true to what the vintage figure had. And that's partly why I think this figure is so great is because it's so accurate to the vintage figure. Some of these classics, what I like about them is how much they improved on the classic look. But Buzz Off, the original one was just so good. So here's my original Buzz Off toy. And you can see just how similar they are. Like the head sculpts are very similar. They hardly changed anything. Uh, the torso, very similar. It's got that kind of bumpy texture with the kind of smooth yellow bands across. Um, the ridges on the side of the legs, both figures have that. The vintage Buzz Off also has the translucent yellow wings. 
you can see here that they worked a little differently. They were both put on one peg and they kind of overlapped one another. So I think they did improve that on the, uh, the classics version here. And yeah, it was just really great to get um, a toy that I loved so much, just upgraded ever so slightly into this bigger, a little more detailed, uh, this new style. Because um, I, there was a, a buzz off figure released in the 2002 reboot of Masters of the Universe. And uh, those were some great reimaginings of those characters. And Buzz Off was much more bug like. He was very skinny with long, scrawny little arms and big, long antennas coming off of his head. And I really liked that look for Buzz Off. But it was kind of nice a couple years later to go back and bring back this classic version, which was the whole premise behind the Masters of the Universe classics, was just getting back to, back to basics. And I think they did that really well here with Buzz Off. And next up in the number uh, 14 spot, I've got Stinkor from 2012. So again, he was a little later into the line. And Stinkor was a favorite of mine when I was a kid as well. So he is the villainous skunk man. And I've got the uh, vintage figure here as well, although I've lost his, uh, his chest piece. So this is the vintage Stinkor. And you can see here, this is one of the figures where they have changed him. Like uh, he's much, much more textured and furry looking on the classics one. Whereas here he was just smooth with the white painted on him. There's no, no furry texture to him anywhere. Um, his legs are very smooth. Whereas this Stinkor has the, the textured furry legs. And part of the reason I liked the vintage Stinkor so much is that my my all-time favorite He-Man character and vintage figure was Merman. And so Merman was the fish man. And to save money, uh, Mattel just repainted the fish man into a skunk man. And you'll see they have the exact same face, really the exact same everything. Same So... Fishman obviously would be smooth, so that's why Skunkman is uh, smooth. I'm sure if they had a bigger budget to mess with, they probably would have given him a much skunkier looking face um, with like an actual nose and stuff on it instead of this weird creature-y face. And uh, they probably would have given him a furry texture. But the vintage one was just a straight up repaint. So when we got the classics version of Merman and they gave us a head that was true to the vintage fish figure i'm glad that when it came to stinkor they gave him his own unique head now they they didn't go drastically different um like they could have given him a full you know a snout and everything to make him look like a fox but then he wouldn't have looked like the classic stinkor that we all love so you'll see here he's still got that similar style of head but let me bring out classic classic merman here so yeah, this is the updated merman. And you can see so his head, ah, too much going on here. So this merman head is, you know, pretty much identical to the vintage merman head. But Stinkor, it's quite a bit different. So the same kind of weirdly shaped mouth and the, bu the bug eyes, but you see his eyes are quite a bit bigger and different than, than merman's here. So yeah, I really like this update to Stinkor. And uh, also true to the vintage figure is he came uh, with a, a stink. There was like patchouli molded into him, into the plastic. So when you open up the package, he had a real funk about him. It's kind of gone away now over the last uh, seven years. But uh, yeah, overall, a really cool figure and an improvement over the vintage stinkor. So it looks great. And in the 13th spot... I have Grizzlor. So he was a member of the Evil Horde. And this figure was released in 2010. And I actually never had the uh, the vintage Grizzlor figure, who was also just a big ball of fur like this. But uh, I really like that they really captured the look of the vintage Grizzlor. Like he's still furry, but at the same time, uh, I think vastly superior in a lot of other ways. 
And they could have very easily went with sculpted fur uh, for his body, like they did with, say, Beast Man or something. But they kind of took a chance with the furry body, which honestly is kind of goofy. But uh, it just works for Grizzlor and keeps him from looking like just a Beast Man clone. So, uh, yeah, I really like everything about this design. So he's just as articulated as everybody else. Um, except he's just got, yeah, this big furry body. He's got storage on the back there for some of his extra weapons. Comes with his Horde crossbow. Every member of the Horde comes with a distinct crossbow there. His has got kind of this creature-y look to it. Anyway, and I just love this head sculpt and the way the hair works with it. You can actually kind of style it around, I suppose. But uh, I just kind of like this crazy, just woke up look. And yeah, he's just a really fun figure. So that's why I put Grizzlor in the 13th spot. In the number 12 spot, I have Mossman. Now he is the heroic plant-based warrior. And just like the vintage figure, he's mossy. So if you see his texture there, he's all fuzzy. And like Stinkor, he had a funk about him, but his was a, a pleasant... Uh, he smelled like a car air freshener, very... Uh, very piney. That's gone away for the most part now. But just a great looking figure and just a neat a neat feature with that fuzz. That's not something you come across very often on these toys. So just the fact that he's Mossman who's a cool character and that he's got that mossy fuzz about him which was a cool feature in the 80s and it's still a cool feature now. That could have been enough to put Mossman on my list. But what really makes this figure stand out is the old Moss Man was just uh, kind of a repaint of the old Beast Man. They just took the old Beast Man figure and flocked him in this green fuzz. But they had the exact same scowling face. So Moss Man looked uh, pretty angry in the vintage line. So this here is the classics version of Beast Man. And he was very close to making my list as well. He was one of the very first figures that came out. I think only the second or third. He came out in 2008. And uh, even though there's parts of him that doesn't hold up, like he's kind of really loose in the joints, which kind of diminishes him somewhat, uh, he's still just a great looking figure. And Mossman, just like in the Vintage line, is by and large uh, a lot of the same parts. But rather than just flock this guy green, they actually use some different parts, and especially the head. They gave him alternate heads. So he actually came with a flocked head like this. But then they gave him this unique head sculpt. Which is more accurate to how Mossman appeared in the uh, 2002 animated series. When he was much more stoic and wise looking. And I really like this head as opposed to the, the scowling Beastman head. Because that head works for Beastman. But I, I like, uh, since this guy is you know, at one with the environment and everything. I feel he should look a little, a little more relaxed. So, yeah, the fact that you have the, the alternate head options, along with this fun play feature of having the fuzz and the smell, that's what puts uh, Mossman on my list at number 12. And at number 11, I have Battle Cat. Now, there was a number of beasts in the Masters of the Universe Classics line, um, Battle Cat being the first, and then they gave us basically the same figure except with a new head with a big mane on it, and that was Battle Lion. And then they gave us one with wings and a different head and a beak. And that was the griffin that Beast Man rides. And then we got the horses. Uh, and they're all great. But uh, Battle Beast here is the original and the most iconic creature from the Masters of the Universe line. So he's got his removable armor, just like in the vintage line. Except the detail in the head and stuff is far beyond what we got in the vintage line. Now, I don't have the vintage figure here to show you, but uh, yeah, he's got an articulated jaw there. Just a ton of detail on the face. Really nicely sculpted. The, uh, the armor can be removed, so you can just display him like that. Or you can put this harness on him there. And He-Man, or one of your other characters, can ride him. And you'll see he's got lots of articulation in the legs. So multiple joints here on the knee and on the ankle. Uh, all the legs swivel, tail moves, head goes up and down. 
there's lots going on with this figure, which is so much better than the uh, the vintage figure, which didn't really move. So yeah, this is just a vast improvement. Great looking figure. Uh, I love every different version of this, whether it was Panthor or Battle Lion or whatever. But yeah, Battle Cat with this striking green and orange paint job, he's the best. So yeah, there you go. Battle Cat, number 11. In the number 10 spot, I have Manny Faces from 2011. So Manny Faces was a character that my older brother had when we were kids. Very neat looking, very strange design, which is saying a lot because pretty much all the Masters of the Universe were kind of strange. But this guy especially, you know, he's kind of weird bare chest and bare legs, and then he's got this kind of robotic semi-armor. Uh, like, it's just, it's a it's an odd, odd look. And what makes this figure so great is that the old Masters of the Universe figures back in the 80s, all of them had a like a feature like the simplest one being I'll bring vintage merman back here is they all did had this thunder punch or whatever where you swing around and they punch but a lot of them had additional features um, like mecha neck you pushed a lever on his back and his neck extended or ram man you could tuck his legs up into his body and then hit a lever and his head would pop out like he was ramming something now unfortunately in the classics line here this modern line is they don't really do any of those um, play features. Um, they, they kind of replicated them as best they could. So with mech and neck, you have to take his head off and you can add an extended neck. But it's not like the quick, fun click of a button that it was in the old line. So what I love so much about this Manny Faces is that he retains his vintage play feature without hindering the functionality of the figure. Because one thing I don't like is when a figure... Uh, his arms can't move unless you squeeze his legs together or something. So this guy has all the same articulation and playability as any of the other figures in the line. But when you spin this little knob on his helmet, he goes from having a, a human face to a robot face to a monster face. And that's why he is many faces, because he has many faces. So... It's a quick, easy, little, fun little feature that you can do, and it's just a fun throwback to the vintage line. And he's a, he a fun character besides, with a really neat look. So that's why Manny Faces makes the number 10 spot on my list. In the number 9 spot, I have Adora, also from 2010. So Adora, as you probably know, is She-Ra's alter ego. So... I think any of the She-Ra characters in this modern line are an improvement over the uh, the vintage figures because the vintage figures were marketed towards girls, so they made them as much dolls as they were action figures. Like, they all had rooted hair, and they all came with brushes so you could comb their hair, but it was just like a big plume of big blonde hair on the vintage Adora figure. Um, she didn't really match the Masters of the Universe figures, even though they were supposed to be kind of in related lines. They just had a totally different body type. Um, and yeah, their faces were kind of painted up to look like Barbie dolls. Whereas this Adora, she looks like Adora from the cartoon. And she fits in perfectly with the figures from this line. They don't look like two lines kind of getting squished together. And thank God they got rid of the rooted hair. The sculpted hair is uh, just way better. And like the face sculpt here too. You can see she's uh, it's like a pretty face sculpt without being uh, too dolled up to look like a supermodel or anything. She's got her sword. I believe she had some other accessories. Uh, she's got a pistol in her holster and I imagine a shield. Again, it's been a long time since I've had to dig out all their accessories, so I can't remember everything she came with. Uh, she's got a nice little uh, spot to store her, her sword on her back there. And really the main thing about her is just how vastly improved she is over the, the vintage figure. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's a really nice sculpt. It's a relatively simple design. And uh, yeah, even though I could have put any of the other She-Ra characters on this list, uh, Adora is my favorite of all the, uh, the She-Ra characters. So there you go. That's Adora at number nine. At number eight, I have Moduloc. And how could this guy not be on the list? He's just so crazy looking. 
Now, I don't have the vintage Modulock. I never did. But uh, he was very similar in that he was two guys kind of mashed together. Um, and you, had, you could assemble this guy however you wanted to. So I've got him, well, I think as many pieces as I could use. Because this guy came in a box with just a whole bunch of spare parts. Different arms, different legs. And so I've used these little segments here to snap this kind of thorax and abdomen together. So I'm, I'm using all six legs that he came with. I've used this piece here, which allows you to put both arms in the joint. But you could pop this thing out and just plug one of these arms directly in there. Same as with the head. You'll see that this thing here adds a double neck. But you could pop that out and then just take one of these heads and pop them in there. So you could basically create these as two different characters just standing on their own. Or you can mash them together into this big crazy Modulock monster. And there are multiple configurations. Like if you want to put his two heads on his shoulder and a leg coming out of his neck, you can do that. And uh, yeah, he's just super fun, super goofy, uh, you know, accurate to the vintage toy. But at the same time, they've improved everything that was fun about the vintage toy. So yeah, love this guy. Looks great. And yeah, that's Modulock. Uh, this guy was released in 2014, by the way. So a little later in the line. But uh, yeah, looks awesome. In the number seven spot, I've got Ram Man. Now, uh, so this guy came out in 2013. So he's been out a while now. But uh, if you've been collecting this line since pretty much the very beginning, like I have, 2013 seemed like quite a ways away. Because uh, when this line started at the end of 2008, and figures were coming out every month. You were really hoping for a character like Ram Man because he was such a, like a popular character in the vintage line. And uh, I think the problem was is that he required so much unique parts. A lot of these He-Man figures, like you saw with say Stinker or Merman, they were built off using the same parts, just repainted over and over again. But Ram Man, he pretty much needed to be built from scratch. So he required a bit of a commitment of, of funds, and I feel that's why maybe Mattel was a little late getting to some characters like uh, Ram Man and Modulock, who didn't come out for you know four or five years into the line. So Ram Man here was worth the wait. Uh, even though he doesn't have that little feature that I talked about before, in the old figure you would push his torso down, his legs would go up inside of him, and then you click a button and he would pop up. And so you could use him to kind of batter the door off of the, the jaw bridge on Castle Grayskull. This guy doesn't have any features like that. His legs don't push into him. Um, one thing he does have, which is kind of neat, which I don't have here to show you, unfortunately, is he had an alternate head. So he had an, a head without the helmet on, which was kind of neat. He just had blonde hair and he had like a metal plate, sort of like this, kind of built into his head. So I don't know if Ram Man had a motorcycle accident or something at one point in his life but yeah he's got a metal plate built right into his head and yeah it's a little storage in the back there we can clip his axe and just really cool looking he's he's short he's stocky like just to bring out a more standard figure here i'll bring merman back out again and you can see size wise he's just a a lot thicker the pieces are totally different like the way his legs are built with those Michelin man type legs um, They're still articulated at the at the knee just not as well You can't see the joint there, but it's a little harder to move them than with the other figures But overall Ram Man was just a super fun figure it looked super cool and it felt like a long time coming when we finally got this guy in 2013 So yeah, that's Ram Man at number seven so next up on my list at number six, um, some of you might consider this a bit of a cheat because this is the Merman based on the Filmation cartoon. And there was no Filmation style toys in the vintage line. So I maybe could have saved this figure for my, my other list. But Merman, uh, he was a character that we did get in the vintage line. So I figured uh, I can put this one on the list regardless. And I just love this figure. So I already showed you the, uh, there's Vintage Merman, and, you know, he looks great, and I loved this toy as a kid, and I love, you know, the updated modern one here, but 
I really liked the way Merman looked in the cartoon. I thought he looked more fishy. He talked with kind of a bubbly, fishy voice. And this head here, which is almost a little cat-like maybe, um, never really matched up to this, which, you know, this guy's clearly got fins on the side of his head rather than these kind of weird cat ears and stuff. So even though I really liked this figure and I was content as a child to have this head, it's really cool to finally get Merman in his fishiest of looks based on the Filmation cartoon. I think he looks fantastic. I love that head. And this is a pretty recent figure. This one just came out uh, last year in 2018. So he was produced by Super 7 rather than Mattel directly. And yeah. He looks a little less detailed, as you can see. Um, like just comparing their armors for a second. Like, you know, his has got all this detail and different different paint colors where this guy's just flat, yellow, no shadowing. Uh, and that's fine because he's supposed to look like the cartoon. So I think this figure captures that look really well. And he's my favorite Masters of the Universe character of all time. So it was really awesome to get this figure. And of course he was going to make my list. So there you go. That's Animated Merman at number six. So now we're into my top five. So my number five spot, this one could arguably considered another cheat, as this is Snake Armor He-Man. And there was no Snake Armor He-Man in the vintage line. This is based on the 2002 uh, rebooted toy, toy line. But again, he's He-Man. There was a He-Man figure in the vintage line, obviously. So that's good enough for me. I say any character that was in the vintage line works for this list. It's my list, it's my rules. So. Here is the vintage He-Man figure. Again, I don't have his uh, his armor. And so yeah, I've had this, this figure since I was a little kid. Um, his mangled hand here, that's actually my little brother when he was a baby that chewed on that. Um, so yeah, I've had this figure since it came out back in whatever, 82, 83. And even though, you know, He-Man was the star of the show, the show, you know, focused on He-Man. He was in every episode. He was the star of the movie. I never really, you know, cared for He-Man that much. Like, how could he possibly compete with characters like Buzz-Off and Stratos and Moss-Man and Manny-Faces? They were all much more interesting. So it always seemed weird to me that the hero was kind of, I felt, should have been pushed to the background. Like, whenever we played with our toys... It was never really He-Man that was saving the day. It was usually Buzz Off and Stratos for me. So this figure, it's cool. It's got a lot of uh, nostalgic value. You know, when you look at this thing, you know, you immediately think 80s. You know, it looks great for what it was. I just didn't necessarily love He-Man as a character. And they've made, um, you know, modern versions of this He-Man. Now, I don't have all of them. But like, here's one of the early ones I have. So this is Thunder Punch He-Man. And again, he's got that kind of moppy hair. Um, you know, this is a cool figure. But at the same time, he's not nearly as cool as his, uh, you know, his teammates there. And then this version here, which I just got this year. This is Super 7's animated He-Man. I actually love this figure. It's a great representation of how He-Man looked in the cartoon. But he is still the He-Man that was in the cartoon with this kind of silly page boy haircut. It's just hard to look at him and think, yeah, he's really cool compared to all of his you know, more interesting uh, teammates. Now, when it came to the 2002 line, I thought for the first time, He-Man seemed cool. Like, yeah, he was still just a blonde guy and it's hard to compete with a bug man and a guy with three faces. But he had this kind of modern haircut, looked a little moppier. It wasn't like a page boy cut. Um, he was just not as dorky in that cartoon. And I just really liked the look of him. And they gave him a couple different looks in the modern, in the 2002 line. First, there was the kind of classic one, which was just wearing the loincloth and then the gray and red crisscross armor. But then they gave him some cold weather armor and uh, uh, I don't know, a couple other things, some ninja armor, I think. And one of them was this snake armor. And when it came to the modern line of the classics, they did it, they mostly focused on the vintage line, but every now and again, they would kind of do a figure based on the 2002. 
and this was the He-Man they went with. So we didn't get a 2002 He-Man in the standard loincloth and armor. Um, we got the snake armor version. So I might have even preferred this figure even more if he was kind of the standard He-Man. But uh, this snake armor is just really awesome. I like it a lot. You know, it makes sense that He-Man maybe wouldn't want to be running around in a loincloth all the time. So you can see some of the detail on this. And yeah, I just think this is the coolest He-Man we got. It maybe isn't necessarily the best because again, I like this figure a whole lot. It's very true to the cartoon, but I'd rather hang out with this guy. He looks like a cooler He-Man. And I just thought to finally make He-Man cool, um, that gives this figure a lot of credit because I think Mattel would have liked He-Man to be every kid's favorite character, but I bet you he wasn't for a lot of kids. And if you looked a little bit more like this back in the day, I probably would have liked He-Man a whole lot more. So that's why Snake Armor He-Man makes my number five spot. In my number four spot, I've got Eva Lynn. And Eva Lynn, I didn't have her vintage toy. Um, but this is what she looked. She was yellow skinned and she had this um, blue armor. And uh, yeah, but sort of like with the She-Ra figures. So the female figures in the He-Man line weren't as doll-like. Um, they didn't have rooted hair and stuff, but they still just looked like they didn't quite match up with the line. Like just the shape of their bodies. Um, it was so different from the male figures. And so what I really like about the females in the Masters of the Universe Classic line is they look like they come from the same toy line, from the same world, and yet, you know, they're still feminine and they don't look big, bulky, muscular freaks or anything like that. So yeah, I think it's just the best of both worlds. And Evil Lynn was just a character that I loved, you know, whether it would be in the cartoon, in the comic books, or the live action movie. And this was the first Evil Lynn figure I got. So even though some people might say this doesn't belong in the number four spot because some of the pieces are reused pieces from Tila or whatever, and it would have been nice if they gave her all unique pieces. I just think this is a beautiful figure. Like the face sculpt and paint job looks great. And the colors are very striking. And it's just a, a character that I have a lot of love for. So I just think Evelyn is an awesome looking figure. So that's why she makes number four. Now at number three, I've got Merman. So this is the first Merman figure that we got in 2009, very early on in the classics line. So as much as I love that animated one, um, this one is just uh, the merman that I grew up playing with, with this, these colors and this type of armor. So this one's the most more true to the uh, the vintage figure. And uh, yeah, I just think this one's awesome. You can see all the detail he's got, um, very similar to the vintage figure, except all updated. Really nice paint job throughout. And probably my favorite thing about this merman was, so I've got him displayed here with this head, which as I've showed you already a couple of times, it's pretty much the exact same as the vintage head. So it's nice to get that in the modern line. But at the same time, I always liked merman to be a little fishier. And so this merman actually had an alternate head that you could give him a more fishy and more unique look, which was true to how he looked in the mini comics that came with the toy. Now, I don't have his head handy, but what I do have is I have another version of this same merman figure, except in blue. So this one came out a little couple years later as a variant. But this is the head that this figure also came with in green. So you can see how, how different that is. And it's a lot fishier looking than that kind of cat-like head there. So... For years I had him, this figure, the green one, displayed with this head. But once I got this figure and I displayed him with this head, I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll change it up just so they look a little different. So yeah, it's that combination of, of options and just the great look and the fact that he's my all-time favorite He-Man character that, uh, that he's this high up on my list. I just think this is a really great figure. So there you go, Merman at number three.
in the number two spot, I've got Skeletor. And this is uh, one of my newest figures. I've only had this collection for about a month. And yeah, maybe, who knows? After, after some time, maybe the, the new factor will wear off and maybe this guy wouldn't rank so high. But right now, I just absolutely love this figure. I was super stoked to get him. And yeah, he's just great. So this is not my first Skeletor in the modern line. This is based on the animated look, same as that uh, animated Merman I showed you earlier. So that's why he's kind of flat in the colors. He doesn't have a ton of detail. But that that head just looks so good. It looks like it leapt right off of the, the cartoon. And he came with an alternate head, which uh, I don't have handy right now. But he often laughed in the cartoon too, so they gave him an alternate laughing head with his mouth wide open. And so that was really cool too. And you see here he's got his Havoc staff with the ram's head on top of it. He's got his sword there as well. And yeah, he just looks great. So I don't have a vintage Skeletor to show you. But the Skeletor that was in my collection as my main Skeletor for a long time was this one here. And so this Skeletor came with a head that was very accurate to the vintage figure. Kind of docile looking, kind of round and almost chubby looking. And then this head was an, an extra piece that you could get. And it was it looks like the, uh, the mini comics that came with the 80s toys. And once I got this head, I popped it on and I thought this was just cool as hell. And I was totally happy with this being my go-to Skeletor on my shelf. And uh, yeah, for years he was my main Skeletor. But now I've got this guy and I just can't help but love this one even more. As great as it is to get that, you know, classic comic book head. I grew up on the cartoons and how could you not love cartoon Skeletor? He had so much personality and yeah, this figure definitely does him justice. So that's why he's number two on my list. And the number one figure for me is 2013's Mantena. So like Grizzlor, he's another member of the Evil Horde. You can tell by his Horde logo on his chest and on his feet and... Yeah, Mantena, uh, I just love this character. He was closely behind Merman as my favorite character when I was a kid. Again, I just love these kind of weird creatures. And as much as I love the vintage Mantena figure, he left something to be desired in that Mantena was supposed to have four legs. And you can see here on the vintage figure what they did is it just kind of He's got two legs, but they're kind of sculpted to look like four legs, but they don't separate in any way. And uh, yeah, here's that feature where I talked about all the vintage toys having action features. So you click the knob on the back of them there and his eyeballs bug out, which is just a really fun feature. And he was just, the toy was just super creepy looking. Now, we just very recently, the same time I got that animated Skeletor, we got an animated version of Mantena, which is this. So this is how Mantena looked in the cartoon. Kind of goofy and stupid looking. And he probably never would have been one of my favorite characters if the vintage toy came out looking like this. He's still kind of fun, but not really cool. But this vintage toy looks so drastically different. Like he looks kind of scary. Those eyes look crazy and his weird kind of, I don't know, crab-like mouth. He kind of looks like he could be a predator. These ears are really gross and veiny. And yeah, I just love this figure. And he also looks like super tough. Look at this, those arms and the way they're posed. Very buff as opposed to say his animated look, which is scrawny little arms. Anyway, so this classics figure had everything I loved about the vintage figure except just amped up to 11. He's got four legs finally, and they're all articulated. He's got that scary face except even more so. Everything just looks super cool on him. The eyes, he doesn't have the feature, like there's no knob on his back to pop his eyes out. But what he came with is you can pop these eyes out and he has eyeballs that have the long, uh, I don't know, optic nerve, I guess. So you can have his eyes bugging out if you want to display them that way. I don't have them with me right now. But uh, yeah, he's just he's super poseable, super cool. And... Uh, 
this is he dethrones merman's top spot even though merman's technically my favorite character just because this guy is such a unique sculpt with the the four legs and his uh his color scheme is really you know dynamic to look at with the black and the red and the blue so i just love Bantena, and i was super stoked when we got this figure in 2013 it was so much more than i could have hoped for and yeah that is Mantena, my favorite Master of the Universe classic figure. So that's my list of the top 15 modern Masters of the Universe figures, um, redos of vintage figures that we had. Now, a lot of that was based on some of my personal preferences and what wasn't necessarily the best sculpted or most creative figure. So I'm sure my list would differ drastically from a lot of your lists. So uh, if you agree, if you disagree, if you uh, maybe would just swap out a couple of figures, please uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear what you guys all think. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, stay tuned because I'm going to post a few more like this. Um, I've spent some time the last couple of days coming up with a few lists that I would hope would make for interesting videos. So I've got some, you know, top 10 G.I. Joe lists and my other Masters of the Universe lists and stuff. So, uh, yeah, please subscribe to my channel and come back for some more of those videos. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.